Okay, Friday the 13th, the final chapter is not the final chapter because any movie or film that has final in their poster or title is most likely not going to be the final one because there's eight other goddamn movies. So that was a lie. So around the 35 minute mark, the strange dance which Chris McGlover performs was based on the way he actually danced in club. Yeah, that dance scene where he's just like moving up and down and all crazy. It's like a big what the fuck moment, but also hilarious at the same time. This is right before he did Back to the Future. I think one year prior or one year before. And it's interesting seeing him in this and then go to like Mar uh, Marty's father like in the 50s or whatever. It's um, it's very interesting. Very compare and contrast like sort of performance from Chris McGlover there. He's great. I love him. This is the last This is the last film in the series to pick up immediately where the previous film left off. But I think I said it in the previous two videos. The second, the third in this movie all took place within one day of each other i think and somehow okay somehow within those days he somehow healed from a wound from a, his back from a knife and getting axed in the head he's still human how did he heal from this from just a few movies slash few days any sense and they don't care to bother to explain because he's just back so suddenly you gotta get over because you're not gonna be able to rationalize that uh, oh ted white who plays jason is the oldest jason to portray jason at 58 years old damn he's like in his 80s now like early 90s oh shit if he is uh dead rest in peace because bit yeah 58 that's that's very old shit dude he would be like yeah like 90s right now right is he still alive he, i mean he can't really walk now damn i did not know that ted white dislike being involved in this film but this is considered by many fans to be one of the best jasons um i wouldn't agree to that ted white is good but i do have my favorite jason later but and, and it's not king otter but ted white's good this movie had a budget of 1.8 million dollars and the film made over 32.6 million dollars very successful this one is worth making a lot of money because this one's actually pretty good and fun honestly and most of the characters are funny and goofy and fun some of the kills are good you got Corey feldman he's a relatable character little kid and yeah, jason's somewhat threatening like i'm not scared yet this <laughs> is like oh i'm scared he's still he's not supernatatural yet right come on at the time this installment of the series was contained with the most nudity and gore it was sadly i guess being about the next movie the fifth one but yeah, there's nudity and gore in here didn't mind that at all oh wow i didn't fuck i didn't know this the film was released on friday the 13th april 13th 1984 so exactly oh they're just looking at the calendar like okay what day is that friday the 13th april 13th bam got it so it's funny <laughs> is i think is that the only film to be released on friday the 13th might have to look that up director joseph uh zito uh, was opposed to using clips from the previous installments at the beginning of the film i think this is the final no i'm lying it's not the final movie to use to, to use like a recap but these three sequels have to use recaps and it's clearly it's just filling time so you gotta you know continue that trend will they end to continue with the trend with the whole like dream sequence thing i don't know <laughs> and once he rob talks to trisha about his sister sandra sandra was one of the jason victims in part two so one thing i do like about this movie is that they try to connect the films there was a sandra chick in the second movie and her brother in this movie was trying to find jason and kill him for vengeance and revenge so i thought that was pretty cool like there's actual like mini arcs they did that in the third one with like shelly and and they try to do it with christine in the third one but this one actually has the rob guy who's kind of a waste of a character not gonna lie at the end but you know he has an actual art a, a mission and you know it's it's actually like something new and refreshing it's like, oh, okay during filming kimberly beck who plays shish was experiencing strange occurrences including a man watching her while she ran at the park and strange phone calls at at all hours this stopped when production was over yeah more stalker stories I mean, the alice girl in the beginning will stalk kimberly beck who are just crazy and creepy man let me stop that shit writer uh, barney cohen in original role scene involving jason finally with treasure's breast but the producers didn't want it director joseph also disliked the scene because NBA Jason seemed too human and less menacing. This scene was not included. Yeah, I don't know why they would want a scene Jason fondling with her breasts. Like what? Oh man, that was that would have been like horny hours when this writer was writing. Barney? Oh god, Barney. Uh, he was probably horny, like doing horny hours or some shit. Camelia Moore actually read the role for Samantha, but when the producers discovered that she had a twin, they offered both the sisters the roles of Tina and Terry. Yes, the twins are very memorable because one, they're twins, and two, one of them is just she she just wants to have sex basically. But both of them are fun characters because they are just twins and they're just there they just met these other like not counselors but teens are there even counselors anymore i don't think this movie has counselors i think they're just 
No, it's not. It's just a bunch of friends and family living next to each other. It's not even a counseling thing no more. Yeah, all that's gone in this movie. It was played for humor throughout the final chapter that young Tommy Jarvis, Corey Feldman, is suddenly surrounded by horny teenagers renting a cabin he can see from his own house. However, the reality of the situation is that those actresses were indeed very or partially naked and Corey Feldman was still young enough that Eric or Eric? Erich Anderson and Kimberly Beck took him to trick-or-treating on the first day of the film since it happened to be on the 31st, 1983. So they shielded the 12-year-old for most of the bad stuff because obviously using tricky editing when necessary. What they could not control was the power of the low cop touch Sands brought underneath. According to Feldman in the scene when which Jody, Jody character spins over and greeting Tommy's dog. Unbeknownst to anyone but Feldman, he could see down under her lower top. Yeah, Corey Feldman, he was a young lad. You know, he was 12 years old. I mean, he was probably, some of the actors had to be naked because they were nudie and he just happens to see it, you know. It's, I'm sure, so he, Corey Feldman plays a horny kid because he sees a bunch of teenagers having sex and I'm assuming that sort of blended over to actual like behind the scenes stuff. But I'm sure he was a good sport about it and all the other actors weren't like, like showing their breasts or anything. They were just like, hey, uh, you're still young. Please stay innocent, you know? Edmund suggested that the only reason Tom Savini worked as a makeup artist on this film was in order that he could accurately age and purple kill the character he created for the first film. So the whole point for this to be the final chapter is like actually killing Jason, killing him off for good. But obviously, we, all, we as we all know, it's not. Because the movie made a lot of money in the studio at the time, which I'm assuming is Paramount. Yeah, it's Paramount. They were uh, greedy, so I want to make you know, more sequels, basically. But yeah, what have been interesting? This would have been good to just end the series, right? Four Friday 13, Friday 13 movies, killing Jason in the end. Even the poster has the knife in his uh his mask. Would have been a good way, but sadly it wasn't. Sadly it wasn't. Rob was originally supposed to have a high tech equipment which I had used to track Jason, but the props for this looked cheap and yeah, the idea was crap. What is this like back to the future? He would have like a fucking thermometer or some shit bullshit. How would have been funny to watch? Is it instead of him being like critical thinking and really reserved with that Rob character? Rather than making masks, Tommy was originally gonna have been an inventor. One of his perks was a device made him from a microwavable oven, which would have been what he used to kill Jason. Ooh. Some of this is seen in the final part of, in a scene where he helps repair a car. Yeah, so Corey Feldman, he's, he's new soul. He's basically us, the audience. He's a horror fan. He makes masks and stuff. And he tries to fix like a car to his sister's car. To, that's where they meet the Rob character. And he's very handy. He's a very not only likable kid, but very handy. And not just because he was in, God, I'm freaking the fucking movie. The Goonies. Oh my God, it took me so long to think about the Goonies. But before he was in the Goonies, so. Amy still talked to Peter Barden in doing the film. By the time Final Chapter offer came around, Matthew Starr was off the air. And Barden wanted no part of the horror film. Having hated working on Hell Knight in 1981, Amy still somehow talked him into it, selling him on the notoriety, starring in a final Friday, the 13th film. Even Amy still was still somewhat involved in the movie. Despite her doing other things, she was like, nah, to go do this film. That's good sport from, you know, Amy still. So the actress who played the hitchhiker with the banana, apparently she don't want no part in doing it because there's no lines, but she just did it anyways. Yeah, what was the point of the hitchhiker? I mean, her kill was okay, but she just got stabbed in the back or the back of the neck and the banana like coming out. It was supposed to be like, implying something i think it is but i mean it was just kind of there for an extra kill which i didn't mind so why the hell not kimberly buck stated in the crystal lick memories book she doesn't even like horror the, the horror genre in addition she also said that this film feels not even b movie but rather c movie so there are some actor and actresses who take a job just because they need money or they just want to get into the business and industry and some of them might may not like horror movies and that's like that's fine you know they're actors they're, they're just act they are supposed to get in the role so whenever like fans get mad at an actor who's really relevant or well known to a certain horror franchise and they get mad that the actor doesn't like horror movies they're allowed to have that feeling and opinion man you know there are actors so like they're not gonna do horror movies for, for the rest of their lives well there are some there, there's some who are luckily doing it because they actually love horror but you know that in the end they're actors they want to do other things that's all i'm saying all right final rob looks to be the main male hero of the film to work alongside with the final girl trish please forgot about trish but it's, but instead he dies almost immediately after encountering jason the real final guy of the film being tommy yeah that's one thing they just kind of wasted him they had him build up this whole like i want revenge for my sister sandra and in the end when they finally meet in this house he just yells he's killing me he's stabbing me he just dies like okay that was all for nothing then kind of wasted but that's fine because uh tommy aka core film is the final uh, part of the final act he's the final male character with trish his sister so i'm fine with that okay so let's get on we start with the recap we're in a hospital actually where they take him to a hospital so it pick us right after you got this horny doctor for instance guy they ha he has sex with this one not nurse he kills both of them and then he slowly goes back to is it I, i'm like oh god i'm having a hard time is it crystal lake <laughs> oh no i'm like having a hard time remembering if it's crystal lake or not whatever it is whatever they go he goes there he kills a hitchhiker we meet all of our characters so we have chris mcglover who's awesome the twin sisters and the other 
kids. I'm forgetting. Chris McClover does have that one, like, asshole and friend. Not asshole friend, but he's a friend always calling him, like, a dead fuck. And when Chris McClover does have sex with one of the twins, he immediately asks her, am I a dead fuck? Did I, was, um... Was, uh, was I, was I a dead fuck? It's like, oh god. Okay, this is sort of his arc, I guess. That's hilarious. Oh, there's Cord Filman's, like, hot, horny mom. Where she sees these budget tits and she has the itch to, like, have sex again or something. Like, she's having the itch to be horny again, basically. I just put in that out because, I don't know, there's nothing much to her. She just dies off screen. She has, like, part of one of the worst deaths. Where Jason kills her, but we don't see it. She just dies off screen. That sucks. But she's basically just a horny hot mom, basically. And one of the kills, there's, like, a lighting effect to one of the twins where Jason stabs. We see it in the light effect. And he throws her body to, like, the building. That that was awesome using like practical lighting and boom throwing in front of the camera that was cool to see okay he's stabbing me he's stabbing me that was hilarious that was dumb and all the scenes of Corey Feldman freaking out over like teenage sex where he's sleeping he sees out of the window these two couple having sex he's like freaking out and yelling and head bobbing like that was hilarious you know him making masks and him like you know loving horror is basically us the audience it's so cool to have someone to be like hey I love that too man thank you so much you know like that was awesome and then in the final act he actually stepped up where he like shaves his head all of it to a ball and pretends to be jason in the final act where jason tries to kill you know trish and then cory from comes up and be like jason look that's me i guess trying to imply that they're the same and he just kills the shit out of him with this machete like die 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 we even see a shot of his like jason's head sliding down the knife that was awesome it's That was cool as fuck to see. Yeah, and this obviously does create trauma for Corey Feldman's character. You know, he's just a kid. You know, seeing sex is fine. You know, he's a horny. He's gonna be horny little brat anyway. So, but him killing a human being is gonna fuck with him. So the film ends in a hospital. Luckily, not in the dream sequence. Thank God. It ends with a open-ended sort of sequel, but it does end like some bullshit dream. Thankfully, that trend is ending. With her and her his and sister in the hospital. He hugs Trish, and then you have the shot of his open his eyes, being like, "I'm evil," and that's implied that he's because come like jason now or something because of a trauma of killing jason i don't know it, it doesn't even matter because they don't even do that so it's just like okay this movie made over 30 million dollars look maybe a sequel people look you know but yeah that's like, okay whatever the movie was pretty good this is like actually pretty good i can see why fans love this one but this is like top three top five it's a lot of fun with memorable characters and mostly well, some memorable kills and and mainly because of cory feldman chris mcglover and his weird dance the dead fuck line has arbor to his friends the twin sisters and cory feldman just being us making masks being a horny fuck you know every little boy i've dealt like i do this where i seen like a sex scene i'm like freaking the fuck out that's basically every kid all right everyone can relate to that everyone knows that shit so that was fun to see fun to look at it was awesome to me like oh, freak it out it's just insane this is crazy and it's good on uh, the there's who were nude to you know check him because he's still a kid you know there's some people who want to you know keep their kid innocent which is good but they're gonna like find that shit out either way so overall friday the 13th the final chapter or friday the 13th part four the final chapter i didn't even know that there's some posters that only have part four so i'm not am i gonna put part four in the title not the game this movie is pretty fucking good man it is pretty good i can see why it, it's some fan favorites it's got everything you need for a friday film nudity sex good kills and memorable characters all you really need honestly and a good looking jason that's all honestly that's all you really need next is friday 13 part five a new beginning